I'm a, I'm a partner here at Baker McKenzie. I've been a partner since 1st of July last year. Um, I'm in the uh, corporate department here, so Baker McKenzie is a law firm providing legal advice. Uh, we've got uh, 65 plus offices worldwide. We're a global law firm. Um, my role as a partner, obviously, um, it involves providing a full spectrum of corporate legal advice to major multinational clients on, on M&A and um, energy, chemicals, mining and infrastructure transactions. I studied at, at Swansea University. Um, I went straight through from A-levels to university, so there was uh, no gap years in between. Um, I did a three-year straight law degree, so um, straight through to law and then did um, a year's LPC um, legal practice course uh, at, at Exeter University. I think um, it's always very difficult at a young age. I think when you're doing your A-levels, you've got to make a decision firstly about what degree you want to do and think about what career you want to be in. And I, I think that whole decision is very, very hard because you're not really fully developed as a human being to necessarily know that what you're doing is the right thing. Um, I, I wanted to be a lawyer probably from about the age of 16, 17. I come from a legal background, I've, I've got family in the law. Um, so that kind of was a fairly natural progression for me to go on and do, do law. But I do think it's an early age to decide what you want to do with your career. And an example is um, having to decide which firm you want to apply for or join when you're already 18 or 19 years old, That's right. which, is a, which is a big decision to make. Where do you want to live? Where do you want to train? What, what areas do you want to train in? If I look at my personal um, circumstances, uh, I don't think I was anywhere near as informed back then as students are now about what firms can offer, um, what opportunities there are out there, and, and what sort of potential career paths there are. Um, it was much more back then, I mean it's not that long ago, <laughs> so, um, sort of, I don't know, uh, 10 or 15 years ago, but back then it was, um, uh, it was much more a case of you'd look at law firms, there wouldn't be the kind of literature or information available on the internet, um, so you would you would have to just go with a sort of gut feeling and then um, you'd be interviewed. Whereas now there's a much longer process involved, but I think people are better informed about what they're getting into. Uh, I think it's good to get involved in as much as you can do at university in terms of societies and um, clubs, even, I mean, even if they're not directly related to what you'll end up doing, sports and other things. Because I think what you actually find as you go through your um, career is that Really, that's a key skill is networking, certainly in a professional services industry. Yeah. So getting to know people, uh, getting along with people, and being part of a large group. So I think that's kind of an important thing. I think there's definitely a disconnect between um, starting day one uh, in your job and when you leave sort of academic studies. And the way that law degrees are set up, you do your three-year law degree and you do a year's LPC, which is your kind of practical training, supposedly. I found that year um, not that beneficial. I, I thought there was a lot of repetition from um, the university course, and there was a lot of stuff that wasn't going to be relevant for me when I got into practice. That, that's just a personal view. Um, nowadays, things are much more focused. So, for example, here at Baker McKenzie, what we've got is the LPC Plus, which is a, a specifically designed, tailored course, um, which uh, takes all of the people who will be joining us as training solicitors and they all train together for that year in London um, and sit together in lectures and um, seminars so they are much more of a group and understand much more about the firm so again example is we will go across to them and present on each department what the departments do and what will, what will be expected of them in um, when, the, when they join the firm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's worth noting, I, I trained, I didn't train at Baker McKenzie, I trained at uh, a firm called Bond Pierce, who are based in the southwest again, um, near to where I originally grew, grew up. Um, it was a very sort of different environment to here in that there were about um, 15 to 20 trainees taken on across four different offices, so there were seven in the office that I was in. Um, I remember thinking on day one, what am I actually going to do? And, and that was one of the great sort of fears of a lot of people who were starting work. They were thinking, we've done this kind of academic stuff. Well, I've been at Exeter University for a year doing the LPC, but I'd really met the firm that I was joining maybe once or twice after the interview, been for socials and things like that, but n not 
sort of formally on any kind of business level, and you turn up on day one and you're into into an office and you sat with a partner and you're trying to understand what is expected of you in that role. The law firm training in the majority of firms will involve you spending six months in uh, four different departments with sitting with partners or senior associates. And I think, I think that presents its own challenge because each individual is different. You'll, you'll sit with one person and have a slightly different style from another uh, who may want things done in a slightly different way. So you have to adapt. Um, but that is helpful in that your clients are all different. So you know, you, you're really treating something, the view I took was I was treating partners that I was sat with as my kind of internal clients for the purpose of my training contract. They were the people I was trying to make sure were happy, um, that I did the right work for them and that um, I adopted to meet their needs. Excellent. So that learning process then helps when you get into becoming a qualified lawyer and going forward and trying to develop your practice because you should be treating your external clients how you treat your internal clients. I was quite good at managing being in an exposed situation but also managing the risk involved in that. So, so being able to assess what I was doing for a particular client, look at it, be proactive, think about a solution, um, understand that really it was me who was doing this but then maybe go and check one thing with a partner who would have only 10 minutes to check it with you but I was able to get that level of comfort by doing that. So I mean, whether that's just a kind of, I don't know, practical skill or mm. it, but it but it's just sort of I think one of the key things that I learned in those early years was being proactive and being able to um, try and present solutions to things and um, not be always just looking for the problems and looking at it maybe from a more academic viewpoint and say, well there's a legal issue here, this is you know, there's a problem but actually saying, well what is the solution to that problem exactly? It's it's trying to take something from one stage to the next stage. So um, and make, again, it's the sort of point that we were talking about regarding internal clients, and it's making, making the person that ultimately will sign off on whatever you're doing is life e as easy as possible and give them the greatest amount of comfort. So it's taking it to that next level, thinking about what research you can do in terms of your, the solution you've got, making sure you've thought it through properly. Okay. And um, so, so it's quite a sort of practical skill, but I suppose it is problem solving. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting subject. I, I mean, my view is that, um, well, it's quite clear that during my training, I was given more exposure to clients, probably, and to matters than you would get necessarily as a trainee in a larger corporate firm like Baker & McKenzie um, because of the value of the transactions that are going on, the nature of the work that these people do, you get more exposure. Um, the work that you're doing is nowhere near of the same quality um, and there are very different challenges that you have to deal with. Um, and personally, that was one of the large motivations for me um, wanting to move to London was because I had some exposure to quality work but not enough and I was getting frustrated. So although those early years were very good in terms of um, getting that exposure, um, I didn't feel I was able to develop in that environment. I mean, the way, just to give you a bit of background on the way we work here, we have a thing called the Development Framework, which is a global um, document which applies across the whole firm, uh, across all different legal um, areas, which is a sort of assessment um, that people are assessed against various criteria. And we find that very useful. It's, uh, it means that you're applying a consistent um, test across the globe and everyone understands what's expected of them. Thank you.